I want to talk to you today about a very important passage that we found not just in the Torah, but also in the book of Revelation in the context of this parasha. Now, I want to give some context to what we're going to be talking about today, because we looked at the first part of the Shi'u at Midrash Tamchuma, and we look specifically at what, what the Midrash is telling us. The Midrash is telling us that, that Korach took the Talits and make them all out of blue because he wanted to send a very provocative message to the rest of the people. Not only that we are equal, that we are equal to Moshe, we have been perfected and we are now perfect to walk in liberty, walk in freedom of our perfection. And then the Midrash teaches us that he was questioning Moshe whether or not we even need a mezuzah. In essence, he was he was questioning the ikarim, the ikas, the the foundation of the faith. Maral of Prague comment on that, and he says the purpose of the mezuzah is to serve as a reminder of the importance of having an ongoing learning of Torah. However, it says. In Korach mind, one who lives in a house full of Torah books does not need a reminder and should be exempt from the mitzvah of the mezuzah. Okay? He does not need it. Likewise, he taught all the Jewish people were fully conversant in the Torah as they had all had the Torah from Hashem at Sinai, Mount Sinai. They had no need for Moshe to teach them the Torah. You understand? There was no need for Moshe. And sometimes we have this attitude today, Holy Spirit live in me, Holy Spirit teaches me, I don't need to learn books. That's the opposite. Do we need the books? Yes, we need the books. Do we need the mitzvah? Yes, we need the mitzvah. We need them both, okay? Now, in both questions in mind, on the question of the tzitzit and in the question that about the mezuzah, the, 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 whether or not it's need to be entirely in trellet, the, the answer that we're giving Ben Moshe is, 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 is the same. We have to continuously, ongoingly, we have to work on ourselves, we are work in progress, okay, and we have to progress. I say it again and again because you see, they went down to the pit. There is two modes only in the Bible: aliyah, ascension, or yerida, descension. If one is in a status quo, he is descending. He is descending, okay, and this is something important. And here the Maral of Prague saying that Moshe ang answer angered Korach very much. Have you ever heard the expression you take a pin and you inflate, in deflate, deflate a hot hair balloon? That's what happened here. It says Moshe stabbed, listen to what Maral of Prague saying, Moshe stabbed a blade into Korach reasoning and completely undermined the basis of the dispute. Just as the tzitzis must be placed in the clock and trail it, the Jewish nation likewise need a Kohen Gadol to guide them into the, the performance of the mitzvot, despite their status as the holy nation. Similarly, just as a mezuzah must be placed on the doorpost of a house full of Torah scroll, Israel need a teacher. Israel needs a teacher to teach the Torah despite having a shame conveying Torah on Sinai. Israel need Kohen Gadol. Israel need a Mashiach. Israel need a teacher. Israel need a rabbi. Even in the spirit, who those who say, we don't need a rabbi because I listen to the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you something, you are guilty of the same sin of Korach. That's what Korah says. I don't need Moses. I learned already from God himself. And that's considered a terrible, terrible sin. Now, remember here the Torah story that the two 
main man here to what we call is Datan and Aviram, the elect of the elect among the house of Israel. And we, I want to look with you for a few moments at the interaction specifically between Datan and Aviram to um, Moshe. The Tanda Aviram were a bystander of what's happening with Korach. They are not the instigators of this thing. That was Korach. So Moshe is doing something very smart, very clever. He said, Vaishlach Moshe likole datam vera Aviram, bnei Eliav, vayomru, lo naale. Moses sent for Datan and Aviram, son of Eliav, but they said, we will not come but actually the hebrew says not that so we will not come the hebrew says we will not ascend and i apologize i didn't have a time to translate everything to english today run out of time but we will make it work with hebrew we will work with hebrew and english in the question for the love of god is why did they say we will not ascend what does it mean they will not ascend what is the ascension that the Torah is speaking about? To me, the two most dangerous words in the lexicon of the believer in the last days is lo na'ale. Now, some of our shenim, like uh, Evan Ezra, say when they say we will not ascend, is because the, the, the Moses was waiting for them in the opening of the tabernacle, which was on some sort of a mountains. We don't want, want to take the hike. We don't want to take the ascension. That would be one way, one way to read that. But I don't believe that that is what it is talking about here. And most of them are for Shanim said, no, lo na'ale mean we are not willing to make this thing our own battle. We are not willing to take our cause. We are not willing to take a side. We are not, we are going to be like the Red Cross. We are going to be politically correct. Lonale! We are not going to be right here in the middle. Let me tell you something. The moment you say, Lonale, I am not ascending. What you're doing, you are sealing a death sentence upon your spiritual walk and you're saying, I choose to descend. Any person who says, Lo na'ale is choosing, choosing indeed to descend. And in Chazal come and they say, Vayomru lo na'ale. They said, we will not go. Achat first, we don't need the priestly. We don't need the priestly uh, mantle. Ki anu yodim, because we know sheadin iman. We already know that the judgment is with us. Talking about being spiritually arrogant. I am not going to make an ascension because I already know what I possess. This is a problem, friends. Sometimes we say lo na'ale because we are comfortable with what we have. And today, a lot of people in the world are comfortable. They say lo na'ale because we know that we don't need to ascend up to heaven because Jesus is going to come somehow magically down from heaven and going to take us. We don't need to ascend. We don't need to ascend because he is going to descend. No, friends. He is not going to be descending to fix all of our problems. This is something that Shaul brothers and sisters spoke a lot about. The lo na'ale, meaning that you think things will pan out when they're not going to pan out. The way we, we have to say we na'ale because we have to be part of the part, the solution. We have to be part of the tikkun. We have to be part of the fix. Even if it is difficult, we have to be part of this. And this is something that is important. We are living in an environment, oh my goodness, you cannot even call a boy a boy anymore. You cannot even say that he is a he. Because if a he decided to be a she and you still refer to him as a he, Oh my goodness, you are already in trouble, okay? I was going yesterday to shop at one of the main, main um, 
main, main, what you call it, uh, uh, gardening store. I needed to get a plant. And, and what do they put in front? The, the pride plant edition. Tell me, why do I want to see the, pli the pride plant edition with the colors of the rainbow? Most people say nothing. Lonale, okay. Lonale, it's your business. Brothers and sisters, if we as a society, as a believer, will not step up to the plate, will not step up to the batter, that's really what it's mean. Lonale, it's mean that you hear those who play baseball hear the word batter up, batter up, come up to the plate, and you don't come up to the plate. That's mean lonale. You let somebody else come and take it, and the other person is going to come and take it. He's going to have a rainbow of many, many colors. Is that the people that we want? We want to take and speak for us, for our voices. Listen to this. Lonale. Okay? Abraham Evan Ezra. Uh, Evan Ezra. He is comment on the tongue of the word lonale on the topic of ascension in two ways beshnei ofanim aleph it is possible that the tent of meeting was in a very high altitude geographically i don't think that this is the real thing that's aleph but מי שהולך לעבודת אדוני או אל המקום הנבחר נקרא עולה. Any person who come to serve God, any person who come to do avodat Adonai, meaning to worship God, to pray, or to do the avodah, or to do the sacrifice, or whatever it is, he is coming to a, the chosen place by God. He is calling as ole. Well, what is the word ole? In Hebrew, modern Hebrew, we know that the word ole means immigrant. Well, when we go up to the Jerusalem, we say, I'm going up, Ali, Aliti Yerushalayim, is the word Ole, okay? And it says here that, that according to the Kliyakar, Moses sent after Datan and Aviram, uh, the messenger, to speak to the hard word of peace, of Shalom. But what did they do? Vehem Chashdu. They became suspicious that, be, that because they are a major part of this feud, okay, Moses want to give him some sort of a, let's call it a position under the table that Moses trying to bribe them so that they will not be part of this feud and that they will go away. So they said to Moses, Lonale, we are not going to take any sort of bribe for, for this, for your agenda. But really what they're saying, they're not saying Lonale because, oh, we're so holy. We don't want to take side. We don't want, we don't. No, that's not why they say Lonale, brothers and sisters. The reason that they say, because they choose not to stand to what is right and what is holy and what is righteous and what is good. They chosen not to do this. They had an opportunity and Moses asking them the question. So, so Moses sending those men, Malachim to them, the messengers, and he said to them, are you going to be on the side of righteousness? Are you going to speak for the truth? Are you going to be speaking for the Torah? And they were unable to make a stand. I call it being bold in both sides. When you cannot choose a side, brothers and sisters, for the sake of being politically correct, you will become bold on both sides. This is what the Torah is coming to tell us. Even though the sin was not their own sin, it was the sin of Korach. Moses was more angry with Datan and with Aviram than with Korach. You know why? Because they knew the right from wrong and they choose not to take sides. It is the sin of being indifferent. And we're seeing throughout 
Jewish history, what happened when people are being indifferent? Mount Sinai take place. 597,000 people are standing and just waiting for Moshe Rabbeinu to come down. 3,000 people build the golden calf. Well, why did all the other 597,000 people were judged? Because they did not stop the 3,000 people who were committing this great, great transgression. Are you following what I am telling you? When one become a person that is in indifference to the world around himself, that is not busy in the tikkunim. And I want to speak to those of you here who are Christians who just want to be raptured to heaven. Friends, that is not the solution. The solution, when you say, I just want to be raptured up to heaven, I'm saying, Lonale, I am not doing tikkunim in the world. All what I want to do is to get the heck out of here. Look, listen to Christian, Christian telev television. All what they speak about is when the rapture will take place. It's the same spirit of Datan and Aviram. Lonale, where, where Moshe says to him, will you come and help me to sort out this mess and be part of the tikkun of the children of Israel? But when they chose not to do it, guess what took place? When they chose not to do it, they become a part of the problem. And the question for all of us today is, are you going to be part of the problem by saying, live and let live, basically for the sake of being spiritually sensitive, Spirit, and I'm using it in quote, sensitive, or am I going to be part of the fixing of the society, fixing of Klal Israel? Which side am I going to be choosing? And here Chazal explained to us that according to the Gemara, when it says, Vayakam Moshe Vayelech, and Moses got up and walked, Yesh Mishum Nisayon, there is final, Moses is throwing the final Hail Mary. On final sake of reconciliation. They have already been judged. Then Rashi said that this part of the Pius of reconciliation from Moses is much clearer. Although the judgment has been passed already on them, on, on, on Aviram and Datan. They already been condemned. Look at Moses. Look at the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu did not quit on them, did not give on them, give up on them, did not do those things on the op opposite. He knew that there is decree upon them already. But even though he knew there's a decree, he said there is still a time, there's still a chance, there's an opportunity. Look at Moshe. So Moshe is do a, a opportunity for reconciliation and that's what the way we should operate we're going to war in order to have peace we are not fighting against people we're not wrestling against flesh and blood the part the battles is not with us with the with the people of the world with the chorus of the world that ultimately say there is no need for definition of torah this is what core rebellion is about there is no need for a standard of Torah in the world. And make sure that you understand what we are dealing with right now in the world. The same thing as Korah Rebellion. You know what? You're going to see, and I hope I'm wrong, but we are going to see in the days ahead, anarchists. We are going to see nation turn against nation. We're going to see a neighbor turn against, against his friend. We're going to see a father turn against the son and the son against the father. And we're going to see all of those things because at the end of the day, if there is no Torah in the world, there is no an absolute of right and wrong. Okay, if there is no Torah, and if we are living in a Torah society, then well, guess what? We already perfected to the issue. There's no need for an absolute law. And that was the exact issue here with Korach. You see, it says, I, I, I love what the Maharal of Korach is saying. It says, when the argument of, of Korach undermined, Korach removed all the pretense and directly accused Moshe of fabricating Alakha, 
Oh my goodness, Moses, you fabricate halakha. What we as the believers are being judged today in the world today. You are fabricating halakha that we were created in God in the image. You are fabricating halakha that a person that was born as a boy, he is really a boy. You're fabricating it today into the world because the world is telling you, no, he was born as a boy, but God made a mistake and he's really a girl the same thing that Korah is doing the liberalism in the world today the godlessness the Torah less is doing the exact same thing they are being and this is what you're going to be accused on in the last days you need to know what you're going to be accused of of fabricating Allah on the issue of humanity even he said listen to this this is not what you were commanded in Sinai. You made it up. With this argument, Korah denied the veracity of Moshe transmission of the Torah, which is the basis of the oral Torah. The oral Torah is based on our Mesorah, the transmission of the Torah from Hashem to Moshe and from teacher to a student throughout all generation. Those who are rejecting the oral Torah, they are doing the same thing today. They are just like Korach. Those who reject oral Torah are nothing more than a modern Korach today. Listen to this. The oral Torah is based on the Mesorah, the transmission of the Torah from, from Hashem to Moses and from teacher to student throughout all generation and denying the veracity of any leak of this chain undermine the entire basis. This was certainly true from the case of Korach. This was certainly true in his skin, who denied the very first link in the chain of the transmission. What was caused Korach to go away? His rejection, brothers of sisters, of the oral Torah. The rejection of the oral transmission, according to Maharal of Prague, is the root cause behind the fact that he took upon himself its own interpretation. You know why? Look at this right now, what's happening in the Messianic Jewish world. People interpreting things according to their own eyes, even that God says, do not do that. Do not interpret things according to your own eyes. People wear the tzitzit the way they want to. They celebrate in the Chagim they want to. They celebrate the Moadim the way they want to do. They do whatever they, the heck they want to do, which has become a mess. It's become a balagan. It's become craziness. And why is it? For the same reason of Korah, he said, no, Moses, there is no real transmission from you to, from, from God to you. You made it all up. That was the root of the issue. And the question that I have for each and every, every one of you today, do you interpret things according to your own way or do you interpret things according to Israel? Paul makes this point very clear and I'm going to bring it in Roman DNA because it is critical. He said that the avodah, the service, the Torah, the adah, all of those things has given to the Jewish people. And that's something you have to understand. Paul never says in Romans chapter 9 that those things have been taken from the Jewish people. He might disagree with them on the Messiah, but he never questioned has what been transmitted to the Jewish people. Here in our case, Korach is the one who is Brothers and sisters, Korach is the one who is truly indeed questioned the transmission that is given to Moses and the oral tradition, just like the modern Hebrew roots movement. Nothing new under the sun. We go, we went down back 3,000 years and we are dealing with the same thing again. People who are questioning at what has been transmitted to the Jewish people. Why do you see the Hebrew roots teacher so popular today? Because they don't teach halacha. They make their own halacha. This is very, very seductive to a Gentile seer. I keep Torah, yet I do this. And no, you don't keep Torah. You do whatever you feel like doing. I keep kosher. No, you don't keep kosher. 
Don't be a hypocrite about those things. You make your own rules as you go along, which are separate from the rules of Israel. And this is something that we have to understand here. It's better not to say that we do something and, and be hypocritical about this. Brothers and sisters, this is a critical, critical shiur for us today. He is rejecting the Mesorah. He is re rejecting the oral interpretation. That's the point of Maharal of Prague. When I read it, I said, I cannot believe it. I can't believe what I'm reading here from those things. It says this. The oral Torah is based on, on, on the Mesorah, which means what is being transmitted. The transmission of the Torah from Hashem to Moses, from the teacher to a student throughout the generation, and denying the veracity of the link of the chain undermined the entire basis. This was certainly the true in the case of Korach, who was denied the very first link in the chain of transmission of the Torah from Hashem to Moses in Sinai. Korach denial gave him the status of a heretic. The denial, let me tell you again, really the reason that he was consumed by the heavens he's because he was giving him the status of the heretic the consciousness for this came swiftly and he was swallowed up to the ground upon his demise any doubt of veracity of Moshe transmission of the torah was put to rest Korach himself recognized this as he could have heard from the balls of the earth representing over and over again. Moshe is a met and the Torah is a met. As the earth opened up according to the Midrash, the words the earth spoke and said, Moses is truth and the, the Torah is a met. Moshe is a met and the Torah is a met and you are rejecting the Messorah that is passing to Israel to make your own Messorah that fit your lifestyle. Brothers and sisters, there is a Korach inside each and every one of us that we must deal with today. Listen to this. Despite all of those things, Datan and Aviram, they are seeing this. But their sin is worse than Korah because they're seeing this sin and they do nothing about this to stop it. They're not choosing a side. That's not choosing to be warm or cold. Does that sound like somebody who spoke to us? Let me conclude with this. I know your works. You are neither cold or hot. Would that you were either cold or hot? So, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. These are the words that spoken in the book of Revelation before the coming of the Lord in the great judgment. I believe that all of us, part of the judgment that we're going to be sitting on and being judged is how hot or cold we were. Where we polarized toward the Lord, where we standing in one heart and one voice and one accord toward the Lord or didn't we? That is going to be the question. In the case of Korah, he is a rejection, the oral transmission. Do not reject the oral transmission. By the way, if you reject the oral transmission, you're rejecting the New Testament. Let me say it. Let me put it there for you. When you read RomansDNA.com, you're going to come to the the same conclusion when you rejecting oral transmission you upon yourself taking the same sin of Korah make sure you understand that you are you are questioning what has been transmitted into motion do not do that brothers and sisters most importantly in those days to understand the problem with not with the Tanvaviram Selon Ale because they didn't want to rock the boat. 
No, brothers and sisters, it is time to take the, the table of the money changer and flip the table of the money changer. And yes, the world will say that you are unloving and the world will say that you are not politically correct. And the world you say that you are extremist. The apostle says that you are against the gospel. That's what the world will say. But this is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that those who restore righteousness will be rewarded rewarded so don't play politics with God do not play politics by, by rejection or trying to play between the tiptoes like the tan ve aviram let me pray with you Lord in the name of Yeshua I am asking that in those two shiurim we look today in the parasha we understand that number one we have no authority to put on our own self a different type of talit or tzitzit with what been entrusted to Israel long before we and especially the gentle came to the scene take the arrogance take the pride from the gentle minds and heart today so they will humble themselves to the Jewish people to the Jewish Messiah and ultimately to the God God himself number two Lord we are lifting up today the Tatan and the Avirams that are among us today Lord Abba, they need to come up. They need to be hot fire for Hashem in this last day. So we'll thank you, Lord, for the fire, fire that today is consumed. Fire in our Vodah, fire in our relationship, fire in the Torah, fire, 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 even to the point that we can burn ourselves, but to the, the burning, we become white white as gold and renewed completely of a burners and refine us through this fire in this last day so that we will be able to be the testifier as it says by the Maharal that Moshe is the truth and the Torah is the truth and we can say Yeshua is the truth I ask all of those things in the merit and in the power of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen and Amen.